NBA Board of Governors yesterday approved the league's 22-team restart proposal by a vote of 29 to 1. The season is now tentatively scheduled to resume July 31st at Disney's Wide World of Sports in Orlando. The Blazers were the only team to vote against the proposal. And so with the season approved to restart, take a look at some key dates here. Games are scheduled to begin on July 31st. The last possible date of the season would be October 12th. That would be Game 7 of the NBA Finals. That's a Monday. The draft and free agency will commence shortly thereafter with the hope that next season could begin on December 1st. And interestingly, we were talking with Adrian Wojnarowski a little bit earlier, and he was telling us that Michelle Roberts, who is the executive director of the NBA Players Association, was expressing concern about what would appear to be a very short turnaround between the end of this season. Again, the teams that make the finals could be playing into October and then a training camp that were to begin in November and a season that could begin as early as December 1st. So that's something that will have to be ironed out. There has been a consideration of shifting the start of the NBA season from where it currently is in, in late October into December to try and avoid competing with football and playing perhaps into the summer. That's something many people have talked about for a long time. Jalen Rose has talked about it on this show and other places for a long time. Mark Cuban has suggested, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, that it's something that he would be in favor of. So we'll see if these circumstances uh, necessitate that sort of thing taking place and if they're able to turn it around as quickly as possible. I am waiting for Jeff Van Gundy, who I'm told will join us alive momentarily here with a variety of different things to get into with him about the possibilities of the NBA returning, which teams we think will be at the very top. And guys, why don't we play while we're waiting the Adam Silver soundbite from last night on TNT? Because one of the very interesting storylines here is a, a, we will show you a graphic in a moment how Las Vegas has reacted strongly to the notion that the Nets, whom no one thinks have any chance whatsoever of winning the championship, might all of a sudden become a contender because maybe Kevin Durant and maybe Kyrie Irving come back and play. Adam Silver was on TNT's Inside the NBA last night. Here's what he said. There's so much here that's not fair, and I think we were choosing among multiple bad alternatives. Um, given the pandemic we're dealing with. And I think that many of the teams that weren't able to resume play, those eight teams that are not included, thought it was unfair. And I think there were also some of the teams that are already, um, in essence, had mathematically made the playoffs, that it's unfair to give some of these six teams an opportunity to play in. And I, I think ultimately, to that to extent a team has a healthy roster and those players are able to come back, um, they are eligible to play. So again, take another look at these numbers out of Las Vegas or Caesars. It's just as simple as that. When the season ended, the Nets were 750 to 1 to win the championship, and suddenly they're 60 to 1. So suddenly the world believes there's a chance that those guys are coming back to play. Let us bring in our NBA analyst extraordinaire, the great Jeff Van Gundy, is back with us for the first time in too long. Great to talk to you, Jeff. And let's start right there. If you're coaching the Nets, do you want Kevin Durant? Let's just use Durant for, for, for the example here for the moment. When you consider the history there when he got hurt in the finals, perhaps coming back too soon, would you want him to play? Uh, yeah, if he's healthy. <laughs> yeah, uh, That's not even a hard question. I think, again, it all starts with the level of health, and particularly his injury. What you can expect is him to come back and be Kevin Durant immediately. But – if healthy and the and the doctors clear him and he feels good about uh, his chance to be successful um, and play well, certainly. And I, I don't think it's even a downside if healthy uh, for the next season. I think it breaks through some mental barriers and gets him a better start going into next year as well. You could manage it, of course, any way you want to when he comes back. They're going to play eight games in 16 days. There will be back-to-backs at least once, I'm told, for every team in there. You wouldn't have to play him in that if you didn't want to. I, I, I guess then the question I would ask you is, if Kevin Durant comes back and is the Kevin Durant that we have been accustomed to, what are the Nets capable of in an Eastern Conference playoff scenario? Well, if Kevin Durant is back and he's, He's Ke the old Kevin Durant. I mean, they can beat anybody. I mean, he's that good. He's that big a difference maker. We all know that. We've seen it. We've seen his ability to absolutely dominate games. But I think that would be a stretch. Um, having not played uh, for over a year to then expect him to come right back in eight games in a non-fan environment and immediately click with his new team, 
Um, I think that's a stretch. But would it make them dangerous in a playoff scenario if he got six or seven of those games in? Absolutely. They have a good team to begin with. And with Durant, they have a chance to be a great team. Now let me just throw it over to the Western Conference side of that because Portland, I, I think, was actually the genesis of the question last night. I wasn't watching the interview when it happened, but Portland is a team that was ravaged by injury this year. They could be getting back Nurkic and could be getting back Collins, and if they can find a way to get into the playoffs, they are currently outside of the eight teams in the West, but if they found a way to get in, that's a team that made a deep run last year. How dangerous is Portland if they're all healthy? Well, again, I think when you have been out as long as these players have been out, um, we can't think that they're going to come back, Mike, and be um, great right to start off with or consistently really good, particularly like a Nurkic who had such a huge impact on Portland's team last year. I think you have to understand that they're going to be still a bit compromised. However, the longer they can stick around and the more rust they can knock off, the better their depth will be, the better their front court will be. And again, when you have Lillard and McCollum, as, we, as we've seen before, they're going to keep you in games. But they needed more help uh, to close the deal out. They didn't have that this year for many reasons, injuries being one of them. And they would be very dangerous because, you know, again, Nurkic is very, very good. And Collins defensively is outstanding. 